Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. In this video, we will be learning about the muscles of the back of the leg. To begin with, the muscles of the back of the leg has three superficial muscles and four deep muscles. The three superficial muscles are gastrocnemius, plantaris and soleus. It can be remembered with the mnemonic GPS. G stands for gastrocnemius, P for plantaris and S for soleus. Now, the four deep muscles are the popliteus, the flexor digitorum longus, the flexor hallucis longus and the tibialis posterior. Looking at these muscles in detail, first we will begin with the superficial muscles. The gastrocnemius has two heads of origin, the medial head and the lateral head. The medial head is larger than the lateral head. It arises by a broad flat tendon from the posterior superior depression on the medial condyle of the femur behind the adductor tubercle. A raised area on the popliteal surface of the femur and the capsule of the knee joint. The lateral head arises by a broad flat tendon from the lateral surface of the lateral condyle of the femur, the lateral supracondylar line and the capsule of the knee joint. This is the right femur. The medial head of the gastrocnemius muscle originates from the posterior superior depression on the medial condyle of the femur behind the adductor tubercle, a raised area on the popliteal surface of the femur right here marked in red and the capsule of the knee joint. The lateral head of the gastrocnemius arises by a broad flat tendon from the lateral surface of the condyle of the femur and the lateral supracondylar line marked in red. Looking at its insertion, the tendon of this muscle fuses with the tendon of the soleus to form the tendocalcaneus or the tendoaculus, which is inserted into the middle one third of the posterior surface of the calcaneum. The tendon of the gastrocnemius muscle fuses with the tendon of the soleus to form the tendocalcaneus or the tendoaculus, which is inserted into the middle one third of the posterior surface of the calcaneum bone, right here. This is the medial head of the gastrocnemius and this is the lateral head of the gastrocnemius. The tendon of this muscle fuses with the tendon of the soleus to form the tendocalcaneus or tendoaculus, which is inserted into the middle one third of the posterior surface of the calcaneum bone. Moving on to the nerve supply, the gastrocnemius is supplied by the tibial nerve and its action is that the gastrocnemius and soleus are strong plantar flexors of the foot at the ankle joint. The gastrocnemius is also a flexor of the knee. Plantar flexion is very important in walking and running. Moving on to the next muscle, we have the soleus. It has a dome shaped origin from the fibula that is the back of the head and upper one fourth of the posterior surface of the shaft of the fibula. In the tibia, the soleal line and middle one third of the medial border of the shaft, the tendinous soleal arch that stretches between the tibia and fibula. This is the right fibula and this is its posterior surface. The soleus originates from the back of the head of the fibula as well as from the upper one fourth of the posterior surface of the shaft of the fibula that is indicated in red color right here. This is the right tibia. The soleus originates from the soleal line that you see right here as well as from the middle one third of the medial border of the shaft. The insertion of soleus is same as that of gastrocnemius that is in the middle one third of the posterior surface of the calcaneus bone. This is the soleus muscle. It has the insertion same as that of the gastrocnemius right here on the posterior surface of the calcaneum. The soleus muscle is supplied by the tibial nerve. Its action is that the soleus is more powerful than gastrocnemius but gastrocnemius is faster acting. In walking, the soleus overcomes the inertia of body weight. Moving on to the next muscle, we have the plantaris. It originates from the lower part of the lateral supracondylar line of the femur and the oblique popliteal ligament. The plantaris muscle originates from the lower part of the lateral supracondylar line of the femur and the oblique popliteal ligament. It is marked in red right here. Moving on to the insertion of the plantaris, 
The tendon is thin and long. It lies between the gastrocnemius and soleus. It is inserted on the posterior surface of the calcaneum, medial to the tendocalcaneus. The tendon of the plantaris is thin and long. It lies between the gastrocnemius and the soleus. It is inserted onto the posterior surface of the calcaneum bone, medial to the tendocalcaneus, right here. This is the plantaris muscle. The plantaris muscle is supplied by the tibial nerve. Its action is that it is a rudimentary muscle and is accessory to gastrocnemius. Its functional importance is of transplantation of its tendon. Moving on to the deep muscles of the back of the leg, first we have the popliteus muscle. It originates from the lateral surface of the lateral condyle of the femur and the outer margin of the lateral meniscus of the knee joint. The popliteus muscle originates from the lateral surface of the lateral condyle of the femur, right here. It inserts into the posterior surface of the shaft of the tibia above the soleal line. The popliteus muscle inserts into the posterior surface of the shaft of the tibia above the soleal line, right here, marked in blue. This is the popliteus muscle. The popliteus muscle is supplied by the tibial nerve and its action is that it unlocks the knee joint by lateral rotation of the femur on tibia prior to flexion. Moving on to the next muscle, we have the flexor digitorum longus. It originates from the upper two-thirds of the medial part of the posterior surface of the tibia below the soleal line. This is the posterior surface of the tibia. The flexor digitorum longus originates from the upper two-thirds of the medial part of the posterior surface of the tibia below the soleal line. This is the soleal line and this is the area from where the flexor digitorum longus arises right here in red. It inserts into the basis of the distal phalanges of the lateral four toes. The flexor digitorum longus muscle inserts into the basis of the distal phalanges of the lateral four toes. These are the lateral four toes. These are the distal phalanges and here are the bases. So, it is inserted right here. This is the flexor digitorum longus. The flexor digitorum longus is supplied by the tibial nerve and its action is that it flexes the distal phalanges, plantar flexor of the ankle and supports the medial and lateral longitudinal arches of the foot. Moving on to the next muscle, we have the flexor hallucis longus. It originates from the lower three-fourths of the posterior surface of the fibula and the interosseous membrane. This is the posterior surface of the right fibula as I had shown you earlier. The flexor hallucis longus muscle originates from the lower three-fourths of the posterior surface of the fibula and the interosseous membrane, right here, marked in orange. It inserts into the plantar surface of the base of the distal phalanx of the big toe. The flexor hallucis longus muscle inserts into the plantar surface of the base of the distal phalanx of the big toe, right here. This is the flexor hallucis longus muscle. The flexor hallucis longus is supplied by the tibial nerve and its action is that it flexes the distal phalanx of the big toe, plantar flexor of the ankle joint, it supports the medial longitudinal arch of the foot. Moving on to the last muscle, we have the tibialis posterior. It originates from the upper two-thirds of the lateral part of the posterior surface of the tibia below the soleal line and the posterior surface of the fibula in front of the medial crest. The tibialis posterior muscle originates from the upper two-thirds of the lateral part of the posterior surface of the tibia below the soleal line, right here. It also originates from the posterior surface of the fibula in front of the medial crest, right here, marked in orange. This is the medial crest. The tibialis posterior muscle is inserted into the tuberosity of the navicular bone and other tarsal bones except the talus. The insertion is extended into the second, third and fourth metatarsal bones. The tibialis posterior muscle is inserted into the tuberosity of the navicular bone and other tarsal bones except the talus. 
the insertion is extended into the second, third and fourth metatarsal bones. This is the tibialis posterior muscle. The tibialis posterior is supplied by the tibial nerve and its action is that it is a plantar flexor of the ankle joint, inverts the foot at the subtalar joint and supports the medial longitudinal arch of the foot. I hope you found this video helpful. To get the notes on the muscles on the back of the leg as well as notes on other topics of anatomy, physiology, biomechanics, psychology and pathology, visit my Instagram page, the link to which is given in the description below. To get updates on my latest videos, click on the subscribe button. To get notifications, tap on the bell icon. Thank you for watching.